But I took two of them, and I aced both of them, I'm very proud to say, meaning I got it all right. Ronnie and they're not, that, they're not, Ronnie Jackson did one. They're not that easy. You know, they, they show you the first ones are pretty easy. And then you get up, you get into the middle category, then you get to the end questions. There are very few people could answer those questions. They're, very, they're actually tough. very tough. I've seen the test. But Donald Trump having major cognitive issues again. This when he visited Eagle Pass on the Texas border, and you had President Biden visiting Brownsville at the Texas-Mexican border as well. Let me show you the contrast between Trump and President Biden, you saw Donald Trump there making a major part of his platform, bragging about passing multiple cognitive exams. And here Donald Trump talks about an issue that you have languages coming into the country. Again, completely incoherent and some real cognitive issues. Play this clip. Because everybody I speak to says how horrible it is. Nobody explained to me how allowing millions of People from places unknown, from countries unknown, who don't speak languages. We have languages coming into our country. We have nobody that even speaks those languages. They're, they're truly foreign languages. Nobody speaks them. And, and here we have Donald Trump waving across the border to people in Mexico. For real. Play the clip. <laughs> <laughs> they, they like Trump. Could you believe that? They like the governor. <laughs> Next, you have Donald Trump tell Texas Governor Abbott that he thinks that Governor Abbott should become the Senate uh, leader for the Republicans. Play the clip. On the what? Well, I hear he's going to be uh, not going to be leader, and he's taken that step, and uh, a lot of people are calling me to the politic for that particular job would you like to be the leader i think i might have i might I'd, have to choose this guy i'd rather be governor of texas i think you're doing well i want to keep you in texas no it's uh a people then donald trump forgets in his conversation with sean hannity about what they previously agreed they were going to say and sean hannity had to remind donald trump what the actual dates are play the clip we're here look you and i made this agreement two weeks Did? ago no, actually, I a said, month oh, and a half ago. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. That's interesting. But we Donald Trump then brags about bringing New York executives to Texas. Play the clip. I'll tell you, it's an honor to be here. I brought some people here, some executives from New York, because they're, they're marveling at it, too. And uh, you're doing your job. Now we have to find out what's going on on the side, each side. Then Donald Trump calls California Governor Gavin Newsom. Well, I'll just let you play it. I'll let you listen to it. Play the clip. And we weren't promising free education, free medical, free everything. I mean, every, all the promises that are made, no wonder they come. I mean, uh, you look at what this governor, Newscom from California, isn't that his name, Newscom? Uh, what he's done to California is unbelievable. People are poor. Donald Trump doesn't know the name of Title 42, so just calls it two play the clip and they're bringing with them tremendous problems including medical problems as you know we had title two and we had different things to solve that problem but they even though president biden has uh, engaged in more domestic drilling output than donald trump here's what donald trump says he just goes drill baby drill play the clip and the governor is going to help because there's nobody better at this it's called energy exactly. and we are going to as i you know i use this expression now everyone else is using it so i hate to use it but drill baby drill we're going to drill in this clip donald trump apparently thinks that he is in office because again he's completely cognitively declined at this point. And he says that the reason that you didn't see a lot of activity when President Biden was in Brownsville is because that's an area that he fixed. Play this clip. To the wrong area. They went to an area that the governor and myself have done a good job on, and there's essentially nobody coming through. So, you know, you're not seeing it. This area is tough. So no, Donald Trump, you're not in office. Let me show you this, though. This is the mayor of Laredo, Texas. And here's what uh, he responds to Donald Trump talking about in, in very despicable terms, people who are crossing the border. Play this clip. These are the people that are coming into our country and they're coming from jails and they're coming from prisons and they're coming from mental institutions and they're coming from insane asylums and they're terrorists. They're being led into our, our country 
and uh, it's horrible. Mayor, is this what you're seeing? Well, everybody has a right to an opinion, and uh, these are opinions. Uh, we have to have a ability to be cognizant of what the facts are, but uh, we don't see what he's saying. I mean, this this is not the reality. We live and work here. I'm born and raised in Laredo all my life, and uh, I know that uh, this is uh, not 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 the facts. Now let's compare that to President Biden, shall we? Here, President Biden says, look, it doesn't make sense that you want to just kill a bipartisan border deal. Look, if you're here, not for a publicity stunt, Donald Trump, Mr. Trump, then let's get it done together. Why don't we try to figure this out? Play the clip. Let me end with this. I understand my predecessor's an eagle pass today. So here's what I would say to Mr. Trump. Instead of playing politics with this issue, instead of telling members of Congress to block this legislation, join me or I'll join you in telling the Congress to pass this bipartisan border security bill. We can do it together. You know and I know it's the toughest, most efficient, most effective border security bill this country has ever seen. So instead of playing politics with the issue, why don't we just get together and get it done? Let's remember who the heck we work for. We work for the American people, not the Democratic Party, the Republican Party. We work for the American people. And And President Biden continues and asks the Senate, reconsider the bipartisan border deal that Republicans led the negotiations on. This is what y'all wanted. And I know Donald Trump wants to kill it to cause chaos, but let's fix the problem. Let's be problem solvers. Play the clip. All those issues for the country. And folks here in Brownsville and all along the border know that. We need to have their backs, your backs. I want the people to understand clearly what happened here. This bill was in the United States Senate, was on its way to being passed. Then it was derailed by rank and file politics, rank partisan politics. The U.S. Senate needs to reconsider this bill. And those senators who oppose it need to set politics aside and pass it on the merits, not on whether it's going to benefit one party or benefit the other party. It's about whether it benefits the American people. It's what the American people deserve. Here, President Biden says to the Republicans, let's grow some spine. Let's do something for the American people, please. Play the clip. We need to act. It's time for the speakers and some of my Republican friends in Congress who are blocking this bill to show a little spine. Pass a bipartisan board. Bipartisan. There's another member. Bipartisan. Conservative leaders supported this. Border security bill. Let's remember who we work for, for God's sake. We work for the American people. Next up, President Biden addresses climate change. He's actually speaking of substantive issues. You got Donald Trump talking about, I passed two cognitive tests. I passed two, I got New York executives here. And then you got President Biden saying, let's let's address some issues. Play this clip. Square footage. The idea there's no such thing as climate change. I love that, man. I love some of my Neanderthal friends. Uh, who still think there's no climate change. Well, my administration is going to keep building on the progress we've made fighting climate crisis, and we're going to keep help folks rebuild themselves in the wake of these disasters. And we rebuild to the standards that are up the up-to-date standards and building codes. And And then finally, you have President Biden talking about how uh, FEMA has helped Texas out and under the Biden administration. Play the clip. And anyway, since I took office, FEMA's provided Texas alone over $13 billion, $13 billion in three years of disaster relief after fires and winter storms across this state. And when disasters strike, there's no red state or blue state where I come from. They're just communities and families looking for help. So we're standing with everyone everyone affected by these wildfires are going to continue to help you respond and recover now turn finally i want to show you eagle pass resident jesse fuentes what he had to say about this all play the clip a lot of the people here from eagle pass have opinions about the president stopping by Uh, some of them are for his visit others are against Uh, a community group had a press conference today about their thoughts take a listen mr trump change your ways because what you're doing is you're hurting the people that need the most help our community if you were to study the demographics you know it's not easy it's not easy being on the border and this unwanted attention this unwanted 
militarization of our community is unwelcome. You are not welcome. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Hit subscribe and let's get to 3 million subscribers together and have a good day. Hey Midas Mighty, love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram, at Midas Touch, to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.